This is not something that you expect to see on the Evo India channel. A van, what is it doing here? But aren't you also curious? Haven't you seen tons of these force travelers on the road? They use for everything from school buses to tour operators to luxury hotels to ambulances to company buses. Everybody uses the traveler. In fact, it has a 67% market share in India right now. It is the best in the business. And now there is a new van. This is the FOSS Urbania. It sits one step above the Traveller. It does not replace the Traveller. But since the Traveller is the benchmark in the country today, that's why we have it there to give us some sense of perspective. And then in this video, we're going to tell you what the Urbania is all about. Because you will be seeing Urbanias on the road. You will be driven around in an Urbania. Maybe not driving it, but you will be driven around in an Urbania. And of course, we are curious about everything on wheels. And that's why we are bringing you our first test of a van on the Evo India channel, the FOSS Urbania. Also, don't forget to stick around till the end. Let us know if you enjoyed this video and if we should be doing more of these. Not cars that we drive every single day, but some things that we might be driven around in and things that we will see on our roads. And the Urbania will not just be on Indian roads, but this is benchmarked against international rivals and it is going to be exported to 43 countries in right-hand drive as well as left-hand drive. So, let's get on with this test and of course, don't forget to hit that like button, share this video with like-minded enthusiasts and stay subscribed to the Evo India channel. Now, styling is not something that you would associate with a van, but everything on the road has to look good. And that's why Force Motors, they went to Italy, to Technocad, to get the Urbania style. And it does look pretty good in the flesh. Now, it does not have the Force logo like you see on the Traveller, but it has got Urbania written. So, this is the brand name for their premium vans. The reflecting sticker that is there for regulation. It's got these DRL, so that's a signature. A lot of car related tech that is coming down to the van segment as well. Over on the side, obviously, it is a panel van, so it has got flat sides, but it has got a sliding door. This is not electrically operated, at least not as of now, but a sliding door for ease of ingress, egress, even the step is not too much, so it is easy to access. It's running 16 inch wheels, 15 inch on the Traveller, 16 on this. The Urbania is available in three wheelbases as of now. A short wheelbase, which is 11 passengers plus the driver. A medium wheelbase, 14 plus the driver. And the long wheelbase. This is the medium wheelbase and this sits in the meat of the category. So this is actually the most affordable variant. The shorter wheelbase attracts a higher excise duty and that's why it is slightly more expensive than the medium wheelbase. This is the one that will be sold more extensively. There is a longer wheelbase version and that is interesting because it has a difference in terms of the safety features as well as the front suspension which we will come to. And over at the rear, again, a panel van. So it has got slab sides but it's got these LED tail lamps with the directional indicators and stuff is easy to operate. Now, this is made on a new line at Pithampur and that's why the gaps in the panels are tighter, they are more consistent, the fit finish is much nicer, the door shut, it is more sophisticated, it is not tinny. So, overall, this does move things up pretty considerably compared to the Traveller. Now, in the Traveller, the entry was from the front door. So, you had to tip the front seat down and then enter, which was not very convenient. But here, you have this wide aperture where you can walk in. And look at this. I'm 5 foot 9 inches. I'm standing straight and tall. And my head just about does not hit the roof. So, again, better in terms of ergonomics. These luggage racks are standard. So, this is how you get it. This is how it is equipped. This is the 14-seater, the medium wheelbase. So, 14 seats, one at the front. The seats are new and they're nice and comfortable. They are slightly firm, but I think over a longer distance, this would be better in terms of ergonomics and comfort compared to soft, squidgy seats. All the seats get lap belts. So, belt up. Even if you're in a van, always stay belted up. All the seats have a USB port, two USB ports out here. All the seats have blower 
vents so you can adjust it it has got reading lights the seats out here they've got cup holders they've got pockets behind the seat for your books whatever you want the seats recline so comfortable you can stretch out plenty of leg room even on the side there is enough and more leg room and of course this is uh, not what the factory would recommend but once you take delivery of your urbania you can also increase or decrease the width between the seats so some seats can have a little bit more leg room and knee room depending on what you want and that's the cabin of the urbania this is the place where most people will be spending the time not driving everybody will be driven around in an urbania but this is also the evo india channel so we have to find out what the urbania is like to drive open the door and the first thing that you notice is the quality of the door handles quality of the door open and shut it is much much better nearly around there with most cars you have space in the door pockets for say sunglasses you have a grab handle on the a pillar so easy to get in but there is a nice step so it's actually easy to get into it has got apple carplay so that's a good thing the music is playing so oh it's got a touch screen so it's got touch screen with apple carplay it has got start stop not start stop to start the car but auto start stop so at a traffic light it will cut out save you fuel save on emissions reduce the noise levels obviously it's got an emergency these sos buttons so that is by regulation the control for the rear ac is up here and the control for the regular ac is out here the gear lever is mounted on the dashboard so this is good for ergonomics also good for ergonomics the steering wheel adjust for reach as well as rake the front two have got a proper three pointed seat belt and the driving position is very car like with excellent visibility so you have this huge windscreen you have great view of the road ahead the wing mirrors they are massive plus a fish eye at the bottom so you get to see even more the edges of the van started of course there is no mistaking that this is a diesel engine but it's not a very noisy engine at that it sounds good in terms of nvh the nvh control is good a 5 speed gearbox so this engine is the 2.6 liter common rail diesel engine which does duty in all the travelers even the gurkha it's the same engine so try and test it and this engine actually has been derived from a mercedes engine so it has got a bit of mercedes genes in there <laughs> So how difficult is it to drive a van? Now this is 2095 mm wide. That is around 260 mm wider than an Innova. So you have to be aware of its size. But honestly, once you get moving, it doesn't feel cumbersome. And no wonder these fast traveler drivers on the road they're always driving quickly, and it's never easy overtaking them on the highway because these things. are actually pretty simple and pretty nice to drive now the engine this is the 2.6 liter common rail diesel engine it traces its lineage back to the engine that they got from mercedes benz decades ago but obviously it has been upgraded for emission norms it's now ready for the bs 6.2 the rde emission norms as well and when it gets exported it will be exported in euro 4 euro 5 even euro 6 emission standards it puts out 114 bhp 350 newton meters of torque and the torque is what's important because once you put in 14 passengers in here you need the torque to keep going and honestly this picks up speed pretty easily the urbania is classified as an m2 vehicle and according to regulation the top speed is limited to 80 kilometers per hour so no point talking about top speed because top speed governed at 80 kilometers locked at 80 it won't go above that but it does get to 80 pretty decently it does not feel sluggish by any stretch of the imagination the 0 to 60 time is 17.5 seconds but as you've seen on a highway the fast travelers they do move at a fair clip in fact overtaking them is never easy and the urbania is lighter than the traveler because of the use of more lightweight materials So these things do move smartly, and also in terms of the NVH, 
I'm talking to the camera and I don't have to shout. I'm now flat on the revs. It goes up to 3,100 RPM. Yeah, 3,100 RPM. And I can still talk. And you can communicate with the guys sitting behind you. Handling. Okay, not really a subject to focus on in a van. Safety is more important, not the thrill of driving. But I'm going around that skid pad at 40 km per hour easily. You can do it at 60 probably, but we got camera guys out here, so don't want them getting thrown around. The body roll is not exorbitant. And except for the fact that this has a manual gearbox, if it had an automatic, I personally could be doing long distances in it. It's just a manual gearbox. After a while, you get tired of it. And this manual is not the slickest shifting manual gearbox. Of course, this version is brand new. This car is van, sorry, is brand new. So it'll need a little bit of time for everything to open up because the Traveler that I drove before this had a much smoother gearbox. This needs a bit of effort. The clutch, actually the clutch weight is good. Your left leg is not going to get tired because of the weight of the clutch. It's going to get tired because you'll have to be constantly shifting around on Indian roads and in highways because of the traffic, obviously. This gearbox, I would like it to be a little smoother, a little less effort to operate. But look at it. It doesn't have too much play. The throws are good enough. It's not like long throws. It's actually a pretty sorted gearbox, if you ask me. The shift quality is also nice. So once you pile on a couple of thousand kilometers on this, it will become much slicker. The reverse is a dog-legged reverse and five speeds, not a six-speed gearbox. This is a talky engine. I'm now at 1000 RPM and it is still pulling. In fact, the sweet spot, according to the green marking, is between 1500 to 2500. That's where it produces the meat of its stock and also the engine will be at its most fuel efficient. And just look at the turning circle. Very good. On the Urbania, everything is new compared to the Traveler. Every single panel, every single, everything. It's got power windows and it's a one touch power window operation. Yep, one touch down power windows. It's got central locking with the immobilizer on the key. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto on this touchscreen, so the driver can have his maps here, music as well. It's got speakers at the back, so the music is not just for the driver. You have a cup holder, bit of a stretch to reach out to the cup holder, but it has a cup holder. There is also a lot of space out here between the front two seats, so you can probably have sort of like a console with space for cubbies, your cup holders, all of that. You have space in the door pockets, like I said, so water bottles, space for your sunglasses, some knickknacks. It's got a tray under the dash, so you can put your phone in there. It's not hanging around. The dash itself, it has been styled to look a bit car-like. Of course, the quality is not completely car-like. This is a van after all. But all things considered, it's not something to complain about either. The glove box has enough space in there to put things in. The visibility, like I said, is excellent. And that actually is the point that I should make while sitting at the back because in an Albania, you're not going to be driving it, even though you can drive it. And it is nice to drive, but you'll be sitting at the back. So let's talk about it when we jump into the back. So this is where you'll be sitting if an Urbania comes to pick you up. Maybe the city palace in Udaipur because that's where the Urbania will go to at the start. Right now, the city palace has taken delivery of two Urbanias. Luxury tour operators are interested in this and the reason is not hard to see. The comfort is actually pretty good out here. The seats are nice and comfortable. The ride quality is very good. This is on par with an Innova. In fact, it is better than a Krista. It'll probably be on par with a High Cross. It takes these low speed bumps really well. You have this huge glass area. So you look out and the view is panoramic. In fact, you might need curtains in the blazing Indian summer. Though the aircon, it works really well. You can direct the blower at you. 
so you will be nice and chill inside here in terms of space well where i am sitting right now there's an infinite amount of legroom but all the seats have a good amount of space the pitch is very good you can recline the seat so say you've had a horrible flight with an unruly passenger next to you you can chill on your way to the city palace knock this armrest back you can charge your phone out here so overall this is great to be driven around in and as a party bus so oh, this will be banging since Paws Motors has global aspirations for the urban year, they've benchmarked this against similar vehicles, similar vans from Mercedes-Benz, from Ford, from Volkswagen, from Fiat, because there is no benchmark in India right now. And they've roped in a whole slew of global partners to sort out the ride and handling, to sort out the safety, to sort out the equipment levels on it. The short wheelbase and the medium wheelbase urbanias get independent front suspension. The Traveller, even though it is the most comfy van in the country right now, that does not have an independent front suspension. This has an independent front suspension with a transverse link, a transverse spring, which is in composite material. The long wheelbase version though, that has got a solid front axle because they could not find springs to take in the weight of the long wheelbase version. So the long wheelbase version has a different front suspension layout and that's why the long wheelbase version of the Urbania does not get front airbags. The short wheelbase and the medium wheelbase Urbania both get front airbags as standard. So two airbags are standard. Also, all variants of the Urbania get ESP as standard. Foss Motors also says that the Urbania has been crash tested. So front crash and offset frontal crash. And that is also to meet the global safety norms for vehicles like this. Maybe not Europe, but this is going to get exported to the Gulf countries, to Africa, to Latin America. And this will meet all existing and prevailing crash test norms in those markets. Coming back to the suspension, at the rear are parabolic leaf springs, which is a step up on the traveler. And overall, it delivers a pretty good ride quality and also pretty good stability. So you can cruise all day at 80 kilometers per hour. <laughs> yeah, you can cruise at the top speed and it doesn't feel strained or doesn't feel that it is running out of breath. So you can cruise at 80 kilometers per hour. It's stable, the ride comfort is good. These small imperfections, it is soaked in quite well. The ground clearance is 200 millimeters and the tire size is 16 inches. So it rides well, it handles pretty decently for something of this size and class the steering hydraulic power assist so you actually get feel in the steering plus you have esp for safety the dashboard it is a molded dashboard and it has been designed to minimize your passenger impact your front passenger impact in case of an accident even the bumpers have been designed for pedestrian protection all of this is first in class in the country the Traveller has always been the pick of the segment. The only other real rival is the Winger. And now this just establishes a new segment in the van category. And this is a monocoque. It's not a ladder frame. In fact, the strength of the Traveller has always been that it is a monocoque. The Traveller, in fact, is not based on a Mercedes, but it is a Mercedes. It is the transporter from the 80s. And when Mercedes stopped making that T1 transporter, they shifted the entire line from the factory in Bremen to Pitampur in India. So when Mercedes stopped making the T1, they had to supply parts and components for the next 15 years for service, for spare support. And all of those parts and components went out from the Force Motors plant at Pitampur. So Force Motors were making Mercedes parts for the T1s all over the world. And then that T1 was then expanded into the T2. So they made it longer, they made it wider. And now they have, I think, four different wheelbases, two different widths on it, from nine all the way to 26 seater, and all on the monocoque platform. The monocoque is what gives it the ride comfort, the ease of driving for the driver, the safety, the handling. All of that is courtesy the monocoque. This Urbania monocoque is all new and that's why they've been working on it since 2016. Of course, because of COVID, there was that in-between break in the development process. So since 2016, 
and over 1000 crores was invested in this. It's built on an all new line at Pitampur. Because the traveller, it will continue to exist. That remains Foss Motors' bread and butter. They sell around 1200 travellers every month. The current production capacity for the Urbania is 1000 units. Right now, it is just over 100 units at the start of its journey. But the new line, it is configured for 1000 and it can go up to 4000. In fact, there is already space for a new paint shop for the Urbania, which as demand goes up, the new paint shop will also come online. Three variants of the Urbania are available as of now. This, the medium wheelbase is the entry point. It costs 28.99 lakh rupees. The shorter wheelbase, because it attracts a higher excise duty, is around 50,000 rupees more. And then the larger 17-seater, that is 31.25 lakh rupees. Now, compared to the Force Traveller, this is on average between 9 to 10 lakh rupees more expensive. But for that increase in money, you get better safety, you get ESPS standard, you get better comfort, you get independent front suspension, you get better NVH, you get better cooling. Everything is a huge step up on the Traveller. This is not going to replace the Traveller because the Traveller will continue to do service. But one step up, suppose you have a fleet of Innovas and you are looking to replace it with something that can take in a few more people, but with sort of similar kind of luxury, this might fit the bill. Premium hotels, luxury tour operators, all of them are looking at this. And of course, export markets are going to be a big deal for the Urbania. But the future is also electric. And the Urbania, this entire platform is ready for electrification. And we hear that by the end of this year, there will be an electric version of the Urbania. Now, that in terms of comfort, in terms of refinement, in terms of NVH, will be a huge step up on the existing diesel engine and that will be really interesting as a solution for mobility in the country.